Hello everyone and welcome back to the Magnus Invitational. We are already continuing with game two of the match Dingleren versus Magnus Carlsen. Magnus lost in round one. He tried that uh, Nimzovic slash uh, Scandinavian defense, but the Ding really just, uh, he, he tore it apart. Uh, and now it's uh, Carlsen's turn with the white pieces. So uh, here Magnus decides to take things seriously. Uh, or, or does he? Uh, well, let, let's see what happens. So Magnus opens with e4 and Ding replies with c5. He goes for the Sicilian defense and Magnus goes for f4. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, for f4, the Grand Prix attack against the, the Sicilian. Uh, and okay, we have g6 and now knight to f3. Uh, we have bishop to g7 by Ding and c3 now, preparing to strike in the center with d4. We have knight to f6, now uh, making it a bit uh, difficult for white to play d4 since the e4 is under attack. So you either advance it uh, and then we go into some knight d5 stuff uh, or you play d3, which is what Magnus did. We have knight to c6 and now uh, bishop to e2. Uh, we have castles by Ding and Magnus also cast castles. And now b5 as Magnus allowed it, grabbing some space uh, on the queen side, preparing bishop to b7 and so on. Uh, and here there is one game in the database where queen to e1 was played, but here Magnus goes for a3 and it is a new move. So already as of move 8, uh, we have a completely new game. Uh, Ding continues uh, developing. We have d6, prepares to develop the, the light square bishop. We have king to h1 and now a5, grabbing even more space on the queen side, preparing b4. Uh, we have bishop to e3, uh, continuing development, and bishop to b7, and knight b to d2 by Magnus. Uh, we have b4 by Ding, uh, and Magnus ignores it for the moment with queen to c2. He wants to connect rook, so once these trades happen, you can capture and bring the other rook over to, over to a1 if needed. So e6 and only now captures on b4. We have captures, captures, and the rook captures on a8. Uh, here Ding recaptures with the queen. Uh, now keeping an eye on the on the uh, a1 square uh, and now knight to c4. And now with both knights here uh, on c4 and f3 uh, guarding e5, uh, e5 is uh, what Carlsen is planning here. We have queen to c2. Sorry, queen to b8, uh, guarding the d6 pawn as the knight from c4 also attacks d6. And now e5 by Magnus, uh, attacking the knight and the pawn. So first, the Ding goes for the bishop on e3, knight to d5, attacks the bishop, and Magnus brings it back, bishop to g1. And only now, uh, d captures on e5. So this leaves the c5 pawn undefended, so Magnus goes for it, bishop captures on c5, attacks the rook. Uh, and it's uh, it's always very unusual to see Ding actually move the rook when it's under attack. So uh, Ding here stays true to himself, he goes for knight captures on f4, uh, and he wants to start an attack against Carlsen's king here. Uh, so uh, having having such a strong uh, bishop and, uh, well, such a, such a strong knight on f4, he doesn't mind giving up the exchange. So bishop captures on f8, Magnus of course captures it, and the bishop captures, preparing to bring the other bishop over here to, to slice over to the, uh, to the king's side. Uh, we have rook to e1, now adding another defender to the bishop, uh, and g5 now, uh, adding another defender to the knight here, but also preparing g4. Uh, we have bishop to f1, adding another defender to the g2 pawn, which is very important as both the knight and the bishop are, are kind of attacking it. Uh, and f6 now, strengthening uh, uh, the, the pawn structure here. We have king, queen to f2 by Magnus. Uh, as uh, he is under attack, he would very much uh, enjoy trading queen, so he is planning some queen to b6 ideas and, and hoping for a queen trade uh, uh, somewhere along those lines. Uh, we have knight to e7 by Ding, uh, and now comes uh, uh, knight f to d2. Uh, so bringing the knight over to e4, we have knight to f5 by Ding, and now knight to e4 by Magnus, putting pressure on the f6 pawn. So queen to d8, defending it, but now uh, Magnus immediately goes for queen to b6 with an attack on the e6 pawn. Okay, for the moment it's defended by the knight, but basically uh, forcing, uh, uh, forcing a queen trade as also the bishop here is under attack. So Ding captures it, Magnus recaptures, and now comes king to g7, defending that f f6 pawn and knight back to c4 by Magnus. Uh, so here we have knight to h4 going after that g2 pawn, uh, but here Magnus finds a, a very interesting idea, rook to a1. Here, uh, if you go g3 right away, it seems like you're winning material, but then f5 uh, f5 is actually playable uh, by black, and then you go into some, uh, some real complications now that this uh, diagonal opens up. So first, Magnus played rook to a1. He wants to harass the light square bishop with rook to a7, and he, he can always play g3 when it's not so dangerous. 
So here king to g6 by Ding getting his king uh, out, out of rook's way, but still rook to a7, attacking the bishop, and only now bishop to d5 by Ding. But now, now Magnus plays g3, and now it's a bit different. Uh, Ding still goes for f5, uh, now attacks this knight, but here you can, uh, well, feel free to pause the video and try to find the, the absolute best move uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting uh, this uh, tricky move that uh, basically traps uh, traps White's bishop. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's knight captures on e5 with check. Now with the rook controlling uh, the entire 7th rank, you can either go uh, to h6 or h5. If you go to h5, then just the rook captures on h7 will be deadly. Uh, so Ding played the king to h6, but now c4, and the bishop is trapped. So here, uh, three of Ding's pieces are under attack, and there is nothing uh, There is nothing you can do here. So whatever you do, let's say f captures on e4, uh, you're just going to go c captures on d5. And again, two pieces are under attack, and it's very interesting, you don't actually lose a piece here. Well, you, you do, but um, uh, the, the thing is that after knight captures on d3, you capture with the bishop on d3, and then after e captures on d3, creating a pass pawn, you first capture d captures on e6, as you need to stop uh, stop this pawn, uh, and uh, you don't really care about, uh, about this knight. So after d2, you're just going to stop it with the rook, rook d7, and after knight to f5, uh, saving the knight, getting it into the game, you're just going to capture on d2 and enjoy this endgame, rook and knight against the bishop and knight, which is, of course, completely winning, uh, and also Magnus is up a pawn. So after this uh, C4 move, Ding resigned the game and uh, Magnus equalizes the match. So uh, already two games, very interesting and uh, still anything can happen. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we're going to see if this craziness continues. What will Magnus surprise us with in the next game? Uh, maybe some maybe some A5 or H5 on the first move. Well, you never know. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Anmol Mohanty, uh, Madhat Salem, uh, Tono Korvitz, uh, Colin Packard, uh, and Thomas Valeri for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Magnus Invitational until it finishes, of course. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.